say my my son in laws have a lot to um, deliver. Go figure. I'm right handed. Because my kids are used to waking up and they all have their heart on the table and candy is strewn around and there's usually some sort of a Starbucks card, age appropriate, a video, uh, something. That's what they look up to. So do they know that? Just saying. Oh yeah, they know. Okay. <laughs> they know what they have to live up to. Uh, poor guys. I know. Well, you know. <laughs> you know what you get. Okay. Um, I think we need to start. Since it's 9.32. We're late. Okay. I'm going to pray. We're, Satu and Judy are here. They're sitting out in the lobby. Okay. And Amy and is here but dropping off kids and yeah. Anna does not here. feeling well. Oh, yeah. Well, so we're going to pray for him this morning. And Karen is out. So. All right. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you this morning just for the privilege of coming and studying your word to glean from one another to see how Holy Spirit just opened up the word to us and explained things we didn't know before. And Father, that gave us understanding um, so that we feel like we know another book in the, the Bible better. That we know, hey, where was that? We, I think I read that in Acts, just because we've spent time in it, Father. That, that it changes uh, our world, but it changes the way we walk in our world. I just pray that you would give the, us the boldness to speak, to share the gospel uh, with our neighbors and our family and our friends and those you bring in our path. In the precious thing we pray, amen. Did you have a lot to go through this week? Wow. I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I was like, now wait, what city am I in? Am I in Ephesus or in Corinth? Or he just sailed to Ep Oh, no, it says from Ephesus. Okay. It's like, wow, what a, a, a lot to take in and to figure out where we are. So I don't know about you guys, but I had um, the sequence of events in Paul's life next to me, and I had the wonderful maps that Doug copied for us so I could figure out, wait, has he been here before or has he not been here before? And is that Asia where he wasn't supposed to go or is it? I, I had a lot of five W's in an H, I gotta say. Okay, so we're going to review, because we always do. And why do we review? I mean, I know why, why, why I review. Why do I review for you? Help us keep everything in context. Yeah. I mean, if I asked you what chapter 7 was about, would you know? Yeah. What? Stephen. 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 Right. So we know chapter 6 he wasn't <laughs> stoned yet, but Thank in 7 he was. What about if I asked you what chapter 2 is? Pentecost. Pentecost. If well, I asked the chapter what 10 is? Cornelius. Ooh, good job. I didn't yeah. know. I was like... First Gentile, come on! I can't remember chapter 10. But if I looked at my out of command, I would know. So, if I went to uh, chapter 12, whose ministry is pretty much not recorded anymore after 12? Peter. Peter. So then we go into chapter 13, 14. What is that? Paul. We get into Paul and his what? First his first missionary journey, and then we get into all the Antiochs, the city of Antioch, by Jerusalem, all that. Yeah. So now we have to keep that straight. Okay, um, and is who's Paul's companion in 13 and 14 on that first missionary journey? Barnabas. Yeah. What do you know about Barnabas? <laughs> Seven to a good for the widows. Good, but not the 12, right? He's right. not one of the 12 disciples. Of course, technically neither is Paul, right? Um, okay, so that's his traveling companion, the first missionary journey. And then we go to chapter 15. What do we want to remember about chapter 15? 15. Because there's a huge controversy here. Big letter. They better get that right. They better get that right. And what's the letter Circum about? Circumcision. Circumcision. Okay, so they give you four things that are reasonable to do. Okay, so if we go to chapter 16 and 17, then what is that? Second missionary journey. The second missionary journey. Okay, and look at the dates here. Um, 47 to 48. The letter 
takes a year, 49. <laughs> then you go into chapter 16 and 17, the second missionary journey with Silas. And we have two cities. Um, My gosh. Okay, we got Thessalonica. What else? Because he leaves from here and goes to here for safety reasons. Alone. He ends up somewhere well, alone. Well, because Thessalonica to Athens. To Berea. Yeah, sorry. Then to Athens. Yeah. Right. Why, why do they put him on a go, go to Athens? Why do they do that? Saving from Right. Death, probably. From probably death. Gone, yeah. Thessalonica so, crisis, yeah. Yeah, there you go. They're not even safe in Berea, so they, um, and he goes to Athens alone. I think it's also the like it got rid of the like he was he made his point he did his part he moved on and then they stayed and established a church under less amount of persecution yes. they could establish it where if he'd stayed he would have been a distraction sure. that's a good so point. I think it was sent he was sent more because he's not scared of death I don't think he ran I think he was a distraction at that point he'd done his job he was moving on good right. good um, so then he's uh, so the pattern is he always goes into the city and then where where does he go why. Of and he's always received in the synagogue so well. <laughs> Isn't that what you want to do every time you go into a city? Let's go to the place that loves me the most. Well, he's yeah. received it well at first. Uh, right. <laughs> and he knows that's going to happen, doesn't he? <laughs> There's always some. Right? How would you... I always look at Paul and I'm like, how do you just go? And you know they're going to go, ah, what? <laughs> you know that's what's going to happen. Every, that was his mission. But yeah, that's that, what he had to do. Had to do what he had to do, okay? Um, you go to Acts 18, possible theme. What do you want to remember in this chapter? <coughs> oh my goodness, do not be afraid. <laughs> yes. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. You're, you're just like, I'm with you. So when you said, somebody said, I, oh, Chen, I think he said he wasn't afraid. He didn't fear death. I think he did. Oh yeah. Be I think he did. Because Jesus. You, know, you can't be like stunned and left for dead. Yeah. He didn't let the fear dictate his actions. Yes, that's yeah, that's, that's a that's good way difference. to put it, right yeah. there. He, didn't, he, he just did it anyway. He got stoned and then went back to the same city. He got stoned at. So he might have been afraid, as in I'm afraid, you know. But it was he didn't let Still it dictate did it. what he did. Well, he that's called him. courage, isn't yeah. it? I'm sure he was afraid since he was told, "Don't be afraid. Yeah. I'm not going to let this happen to you this time." Right. Sure. This right this time. Yeah. yeah. And remember when he was first saved, what was he shown while he was blind? You remember? Everything, Everything that he would suffer. suffer and his death. Yes. Do you? He was shown that. Mm -hmm. Didn't say when, right? But he said, This is you're going to suffer for my name. Right. Boy, does he suffer. Okay? Um, we want to know That's which a nice, city. nice way to start your job. <laughs> right? This is your job now for the rest of your life. <clears throat> okay. Amen. Don't you think a lot of the missionaries that we've sent oh, out yes. feel that way too? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, um, my two uh, friends that are in Africa, um, they have suffered mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And they've been in Africa over 30 years. Mm -hmm. Over 30 years. It's amazing. Um, because when they first went out, there's no internet. So when they would come into Nairobi and stay at the guest house, we literally had a phone chain. So that when they came in, they're sitting in the hallway, now, you know, we got to see that, uh, what it looked like, the guest house, and this is the phone that they were talking to us, which was such a blessing that, you know, that was in the 80s. Their parents are here. The only time they get to talk with them is when they come into that guest house, maybe every six to eight months, tops. Letters every six back and forth. Day, you said? Months. months. Six to eight months. Wow. Right. Um, and as soon as they would call, then they would hang up and we would start calling, start calling, start calling. And when Miss Lindsay, of course, they're the parents, they get preference. So then when she was done, she would call Doug and Lisa at the, the guest house. And that's how we would start calling. And the Lord just impressed upon me to send them reading material like um, Reader's Digest, Guideposts, Books in the Family Magazine, things like that on a slow boat to Africa. Because I'd always go to the post office and go, no boat, boat's fine, boat's fine. Air, no air, mm -mm, just boom. And it, that would be their reading material. For It was wonderful because they had stories of something else. Because when they first went there, there was no uh, electricity, power, running water, no nothing. 
but Doug made that for her. They were in a good structure and they had a generator for two hours a day. So. Now this, she marries a guy that has been born and raised in Africa and she's born and raised right here. <laughs> it's like, what, what was I thinking? And she went out there with a baby. How many children they have? Two, two boys. And both boys are serving the Lord. One in Madagascar, one in Wisconsin. Oh, praise the Lord. How often do they come home? <sighs> Not often enough. Okay. Not often enough. Um, now they're at RVA, running water, power, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it was hard, 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 hard. The baby. And had been robbed in, also in one of their um, mission stations. And Doug was actually shot in the leg. So that's, mm -hmm. they suffer. But God has become more and more real to them. And they're, they're just some of the most precious people you'd ever want to be around, ever. I have a friend that grew up in Africa as a missionary child. She grew up from the time she was born until she was 18 and moved back to America for college. And she, I mean, they come every couple of years for mission uh -huh. conferences or whatever, and she was my age, so she would be in my sense class. So she'd share the stories and everything. And then in college, we were friends in college. so. All the stories I've heard of her growing up, and right. the same kind of thing. I mean, her dad had been shot multiple times, mm -hmm. like they couldn't contact him. They didn't live where they had, even though they grew up poor. I mean, she's my age, she had internet later in life and stuff, but they didn't yes. have it, access to it where they were, so they still couldn't. But the stories of, it was interesting because I heard of the missionary child side. She didn't right. have the choice. She right, she didn't have the choice, she was there. You know. That's a good point, that is, that's a difference. Uh, Ron's role was always, uh, once we got computers, was to get Miss Lindsay's computer always working so she could. Um, you know, message back and forth to Lisa because sometimes, you know, older people, sometimes their fingers hit a button and it's like, I don't know what I did. Yeah. But I can't do anything anymore. And I'm like, so he actually put a piece of tape over that button. <laughs> so I was like, perfect, works. Um, okay, so possible theme Paul is in Corinth to Antioch, Galatia, and Phrygia. And we're looking at this on the map, right? And, and we're looking at Apollos. He's in Ephesus, okay? Uh, first, we'll do the first five verses. So after these things, what things? But in chapter 17, what, 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 we're, what are we leaving in chapter 17? Maybe I should ask that. So the last thing that happened in 17 was Dionysus and Damaris became believers. Good. Um, and they were Greeks. And, so and Paul, was. Is, uh, Paul is where? Well, I can't pronounce it, so don't ask me. I think he's an athlete. <laughs> Athens. Athens. He's in Athens, yeah. We'll just say Athens. Okay. We'll okay, that's, that's that word, the other general. One's just beyond me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so after these things, as in, let's take you from Berea and send you to Athens and keep you safe. And now he's doing the ministry there. He sends back information. Please send Timothy and Silas. Thank you. And Silas to me. Um, he left Athens and then he goes to Corinth. Okay. And he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus. Where is Pontus? <clears throat> right, northern Turkey. But he's come from where? Italy. Italy. And now he's in Corinth. Okay. Um, why did he leave Italy? Rome. Why did he leave Rome? All the, the Jews. Yeah, Gallio. The emperor wanted mm. to throw out All the Jews. Jews. All the Jews. Mm -hmm. Had to leave Rome. So the persecution goes way back, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That was AD 52. He came to them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they were working, for by trade they were tent makers. And he was reasoning in the synagogue every Sabbath and trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. So, how often does he go into the synagogue to reason? Every Sabbath. Every Saturday. Every Saturday. So, yeah. once a week. Yeah. What's he do, we'll say Monday, Sunday through Making Friday. Tents. Working. He's working. Yeah. And I'm sure talking. He's making tents. Uh -huh. What do you know about Paul's education? Oh, he's, he's a rabbi. Way back into the yeah. Jew, Jewish scripture. But they, their father has college. to teach them to some trade. Right. Right. Father has to teach them some trade so that they can make a living. Mm. Yeah. So he knows how to make tents, so this is what he does. Um, and did you say that they are not just a regular tents? They were. Yeah, they were. Did you look that up? They, I didn't look that yeah, up. They, they made, yeah, they. I didn't bring it with me. They certainly made a good living out of it. Obviously, people need tents. I just read that the Jews were nomadic, so they still needed 
tents and tent repair and things like that because they kept moving. Well, obviously, they did yeah. something with leather. Yes, from Tammy. some but, animal. Because that had it had yes, to be maybe. waterproof. I know in the making of the tabernacle, they covered it with uh, dolphin skin so that it was waterproof. Oh, dolphins. Hmm. So when I, I was feel like you know their their business would have been even more like a mounting because tent like tops were sometimes at the top of every Jerusalem home, like. You know, oh yes. They have to have like these coverings from the sun. From the sun on their little upper room. It's like an upper. It is room, like an upper room balcony. It's not really a balcony either. So they are not like the tents we are going to. Yeah, camp in. that's a good point. <laughs> um, they didn't, they didn't make but they also like are that. tents, yeah. like we're they thinking, because ones. they yeah. travel. Yeah, being nomadic. Oh, the little. And it wasn't just for the Jews, the Greeks, and everybody else. When right. They travel, they would buy tents to. Exactly. Camp out on the way. Okay. Right. Does it say that Priscilla and Aquila were already believers? Yeah. Doesn't say. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm guessing that all these talks while they're making tents. That, you right? Know, <laughs> talks <laughs> reasoning <laughs> together because he knows they're what? Mm -hmm. Jewish. Jewish. Right? So who does he always reason with? Jews. Jews. Okay, he so he's sitting around making tents. Seven reasoning people. with. And they're pretty well knowledge because later it proves how much knowledge they have. So he's been yes. teaching them a lot during this they time. They had a great teacher. This was their yes. discipleship time. Oh, <laughs> and they fixed a boss. Um, uh, okay, reason to sing on every Sabbath. Okay, so verse 5, but when Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, because Berea is in Macedonia, mm -hmm. Paul began devoting himself completely to the word, solemnly testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ, so not just in the synagogue, okay? But when they resisted and blasphemed, everybody goes, oh, really? Such a surprise. Mm -hmm. But don't we... You know, can we not live in that era as well and go, I, I figured that was going to be the response, but I have to be obedient to give the word. Your response is not my, um, I am not responsible for your response. That's God. Like we don't live for the approval of man. There you go. That's, you so we have to obey. comes in his timeline? Where? Enlighten me. Where this statement that they began to resist and blaspheme? No. After he starts devoting himself entirely to the word every day. Mm. When it was once a week, they could hear it and ignore it. That's a very good point. Mm. Which, which means instead of sitting there with Priscilla and Quill and tent makers, now he's going mm. around the city. That's, that's where it begins. That's a good point. He shakes out his garments and says to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then he left there and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus. So he's a Gentile, okay? Uh, a worshiper of God whose house was next to the synagogue. Doesn't say he has anything to do with the synagogue. It's just that his house was next to it. Location, but, location. Right? Location. So he goes there. And then he got Crispus, but accidents, he does accidents, have something accidents. to do with the synagogue. Yeah. What is he? He's the, leader. he's the leader of the synagogue. He believed in the Lord. With all his household and many of the Corinthians, when they heard, were believing and being baptized. Now, um, so right, when he, how come he can devote himself completely uh, to the word when Timothy and Silas come? Financial aid. Financial aid. Okay. And when you read in Philippians four, which I think was um, sorry homework page. That Philippian church, because he's already been in Philippi, right, might have sent a gift along with them to help them out financially. Okay, so that do might with, be why. You know, it helps when, you, especially when you're witnessing in rough areas, to be in a group. I mean, like you know, I, I there's a lot of people I know that will go witness in like bars or clubs and stuff, but they never go by themselves. Go by themselves. Yeah. And I think that he needed some backup to an extent to go in certain areas. That's everything. a good point too. It's, it's, even as a Christian, you trust God, you still shouldn't go into areas by yourself. Right, right. He's Could, not telling you to check your brain out. Could sense. Silas and Timothy have brought him some money or mm -hmm. worked yeah. to pay that's what, for that's him? That's what I think. Yeah. You know, yeah. were they tent makers? I don't know, but I think they brought some money from the church at Philadelphia. We don't know what they're I don't know what their doing. trade was. Uh-uh. I right. don't. I know Luke's a doctor. That's mm -hmm. all I know. All right. yeah. Further in the lesson, we either had a cross-reference or it's later on in this chapter that it says they ministered to Paul. Yes. 
But they didn't say how, right? Which, of course, inquiry minds want to know. But, um, so, this is normal too. Some Jews oppose, some Jews believe. So, but he goes to the Gentiles, right? Uh, they've shaken the dust off their feet from a city before, so he's shaking out his garment, okay? He goes to the house of justice, and both believe, oh, Crispus and, it's Crispus, right? Crispus and Justice, who's, believe out his first name, okay? Um, and then, in verse 9, the Lord said to Paul mm -hmm. in the night by a vision, and this is where Kay's pretty much going to camp on the DVD. Yes, um, and I know yes. in your homework you would have you would have camped out here too. Do not be afraid any longer. Meaning, you have been, you have been afraid. Yeah. Yes, but go on speaking. Don't be silent, for I am with you, and no man will attack you in order to harm you. Okay, in order to harm you, for I have many people in this city. Does that mean secret believers or many more people to be saved? I don't have an answer for that. I just, it could go either way. Okay? He settled there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Okay, so why do you think the Lord needed to come and tell him, don't be afraid any longer? He needed to hear it. He needed to hear it. God knows. Before his journey into Galatia, Phrygia. 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 Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it said that he successfully went through, which to me means it was a perilous. Right. Journey. And he's, how come he left Berea? How come he was escorted from Berea to Athens? No, he wasn't go, go to Athens. He was taken to because Athens. his life was in yeah. danger. Yeah. Uh, and is that the first time? No. no. It makes me wonder how many, how many, threats there were at this time. Doesn't he was hearing it? threats and in other cities he hears the threats and they go ahead and get him out because he's become a distraction. Right. And God's saying this time those are th empty threats, you can stay because Stay, don't go to another you know, city. Yeah. It's a good observation. They're just empty too. threats and I, I see the I have many people is the times when God has people in high up leadership positions that will, yes. you know, kind of fuse things out and not let things happen. Like threats right. are gonna happen, people want to hurt you, right. but they're not gonna come to fruition because you know, I have people that are going to stop them now. For Good. Me. And he's already met Priscilla and Aquila. Right. For now, we're assuming now they're believers, right? Because he's shared with them and, and we know what they do later on. So. He does meet one who stops it. Though. Right? <laughs> Go on speaking. Do not be silent. I can't imagine Paul being silent, but. But. Um, I am with you. Go that on speaking. I am with you. No man shall attack you in order to harm you, for I have many people in the city. Amy. Um, so, I kind of, I did camp out a little bit. Um, it said it's a vision, so Paul could have had PTSD and not have been sleeping. And That's he, a good point. he didn't come to him in the dream because it says it's a vision. So usually if you're, I mean, visions can happen while you're sleeping, but it's gone. So he and didn't again, if you've been stoned and left for dead, you're pretty bad off if people think you're dead. Yeah, yeah I mean, could have had that would cause PTSD. And then you're afraid of PTSD. And yeah, you're right. You're right. So and you hear things. That, yeah. 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 Oh. All good points. Well, then, what is yeah. that fear yeah. of? Yeah. The dislike of Jews. What's that word? Dislike of Jews? Yeah, it starts with an S. Anti Semitic. Semitic. Thank you. So I feel Anti like. Anti Semitism. There, that was already being spread because of Claudius. Yeah, because all the Jews leave. Yeah. Rome. So and Paul is a Jew. It's it's like, and it, that wasn't directed towards Christians. It was directed towards, towards Jews. 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 Not yeah. yeah, not even that they're Christian Jews. They're just Jews. Yeah. So they and all they're their clear them out history and all their history. Mm -hmm. But you know, I understand truth. it was because of the Christians, because the Jews had the fraction of the fight, and Rome is the you know peace for any you know, right peace, peace of above all. Like, yeah, if you guys are peace of Rome at all costs. Yeah. So it was because of the Christian sect and the Jews that was causing the disturbance that they just got rid of all right. the Jews. You're right. Uh, on your homework, page 41, you looked up 1 Corinthians. I don't know about you guys, but this gave me such um, insight into these different books. I'm like, okay, I've read 1 Corinthians all the time. Uh, I never thought, oh, right. It is because in Acts... He's describing how he came to them in Corinth. I don't know why. We've studied 1 Corinthians. I didn't I look know. at it 
from that point of view. But now we know. It's we just know a commentary where he was himself. when he's reading it. But just now we know amazing. where he was. And you're right. That's wow. Corinth. Mm. This is Corinth. It's, it's commentary on the self thing. says says what? What'd you, what'd you read? That this is the commentary on himself and how he came to you in Corinth. And he said there Therefore, that I was in weakness. Yes, weakness. In trembling. Fear. Trembling. He's towards the end. This is the longest missionary. This much is much longer speaking. than his first much one. Longer. And if you ever talk to missionaries, like they need rejuvenation as much as possible. Like, yeah, that's, he's been gone and I will tell you that when they take a respite or they come home for a furlough, mm -hmm. it's not always pleasant comments that they get mm -hmm. said to them because they're supposed to be on the mission field. Why do you need to come home? Oh wow! What they a, they get that, and they get that if they've taken a week of arrogance. holiday, they get. So my money sending to you is being sent on a holiday. Wow! Yeah. This this, this is say. reality. <laughs> so I want you to know that's the little ugly truths that come with missionary work. Jenny, we had a missionary yeah. in our home that had was a missionary up in. Way, at, way up north of Canada, I can't remember the exact spot. <coughs> and she told us that people would send her used tea bags because yeah. you could still use it one I time. believe that. I believe so, that. <laughs> Hence my comment, I think you were there when I began homeschooling, that I know the only homeschoolers you've ever met are people with hair down to here, um, sometimes braided, sometimes not, no makeup, jeans, you know, jumpers. Yeah. Yeah, right? And their kids look like they've been dressed out of a missionary barrel. That's what I said. And everybody just started laughing and I thought, see, that's exactly what you think. Princess Diana. <laughs> <laughs> well, that. that's not what I look like, so, you know. But anyway, a lot of what it's, just, it's just a <laughs> lot of reputation that comes with that. Now, I hope you went right to your Bible, to 1 Corinthians 2, and you put down Acts 18.9. Okay? Because this is how he came to them. Oh, he did that. Okay? In fear and trembling. But how do we know he kept speaking? It says, but he preached in the Spirit's power. Right? So he did exactly what God told him to do. Yeah. Don't be silent. Speak. I'm with you. But he tells you, this was my heart. He also I preached in weakness. He admitted it. Where a lot of us would feel like, you know, it's Christians, we're not supposed to be afraid. Right? No, yeah. Paul says this. Is yeah. No. No. Doesn't that show the Spirit's power? If Paul can be afraid... He had a whole lot more to be afraid of than I did, mm -hmm. and I do. Then, boy, is the spirit today. powerful. He can minister to anybody and does. Okay. Um, okay. Now here we get with a big ha <laughs> ha. But while Galileo was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews, with one accord, rose up against Paul and brought him before the judgment seat, saying, "This man persuades men to worship God." contrary to the law, but when Paul was about to open his mouth, he didn't even get to say anything, right? Um, Galileo said to the Jews, if it were a matter of wrong or vicious crime, oh Jews, it would be reasonable for me to put up with you. But if there are questions about words and names of your own law, look after it yourselves. I am unwilling to be a judge of these matters. And he drove them away from the judgment seat. See that is one of God's people, you know. I, know. I have that's a great thing. insight, right? It's like, yeah, no, Paul doesn't say the same thing. No, this guy isn't even going <clears> to <throat> address it. He's not even going to let you have an audience. And about the Paul, he was very intelligent person, and people are ri ridic what is that word? Ridiculous. Critical. Ridicul Critical. Ridic Ridiculing. Yeah, ridiculing. That's ridiculing. That word. Ridiculously ridiculing. He, ridiculing. he still. <laughs> You know, the pride was not there. No, no, he, was, uh, he wasn't and afraid. We are was not it? that hard, so I care if somebody's laughing at us. The, you know, laughing at us. Not stoning us, not dragging yeah, us exactly. before the. Mm -hmm. Laughing at it. Or they might think. What was that? It's not a pleasant comment. Ridic Ridicule. Um, we dig into that one a little bit. Um, Rome didn't allow the, the thought of new religions. 
And this is what the Jews were trying to push. Look, there's a new cult, a new religion. That's why he said that. That's Contrary. Said so he wanted to push it back on them, recognizing it as a, 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 another division of Judaism. Ah, oh, about that. So he threw it back in their court, not wanting That's to address it that. as a new religion. That's why he said that. Okay. So here comes a the guy. They ought to call the Sosthenes. <laughs> Poor man. <laughs> Where'd Christmas yeah. go? <laughs> Let's just pull somebody out of the hat. Where'd Christmas go? It says the leader of the synagogue. But back here it says Christmas, yeah. the leader of the synagogue. Yeah. So Where'd you Christmas have go? a time phrase, yeah. don't you? So well, some sort of time became. Well, Christmas became the leader, so you wouldn't be in the synagogue anymore. Right. There you go. <laughs> That's the reality. But this one was pretty really But you cool. also have some time. Some time has gone in there. But didn't we just say he stayed there how long? A year and a half. A year, year and a half. half. So a lot, a lot of stuff could have happened in a year and a half. So you get another leader up there. Well, and how long did they hold right. the leadership role? Did we talk about that in the yeah. past? About, uh, no. Or maybe it was somewhere else I heard this. That, um, and this is the synagogue in the city, not Jerusalem. And this, so he's not a high priest, but... I thought I had heard somewhere that they were on rotation. So See, they could be. You know how many priests, I mean, there were a lot of priests. They sure were. And they each had a turn. They said they were on rotation. You're right. right. But, but, but yeah, know. like Mary said, I took it as, well, he's a believer now, so he's not yeah, going to be a leader of the synagogue. At the same, same time, it's a great position to be in to spread the gospel. It <laughs> exactly. is. Leave so the why be this leader of the synagogue? Christians does it say he's a believer? The Old Testament. The Old Testament still, you know, but then you can kind of add to it while you're up there. Okay. <laughs> but uh, it says when it took hold of Sosthenes and began beating him, um, he's a believer. Why else would you beat him? Because he's on your side. Maybe they beat him because they felt like he misled them, telling them to go to the Roman uh -huh. council. But it's like so, stupid jerky. Right? Do anything for they him. have to be mad at somebody. They have to take it out on somebody. somebody to blame. They needed exactly. somebody to blame. Okay? Um, but Paul's not harmed. Again, just like God said. Galeo does not stop the beating. Doesn't really even seem to care. To me, that's a vicious crime. Well, it is because you're beating a man in front of you. We just read it, but yeah. Yeah. watch it. That's different, okay? Um, Paul remained many days longer after that, took leave of the brother, and, then, and put out to sea for Syria. And with him were Priscilla and Aquila. So he declines to stay any longer in Corinth, okay? And he goes. Uh, comes to Ephesus. Now, what did, oh, wait, what did he do in Centria? There. Why did he have to wait for Centria? Why can't he just do it in Corinth? Because it said he's taken a bow. Right, and the days of his I like how they just kind of put that in there. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. you got a haircut. <laughs> another, another character quality of Paul. He, he takes a bow, okay? So his, he can't cut his hair until he's in Centria because that's when his vow is fulfilled. Right. So he gets his hair cut. Okay, you looked up something about Nazarite vows, which, you know, could be what this is, page 44 of your homework. Mm -hmm. Well, during the time of your, when you take your vow as Nazarite, and that's total dedication to the Lord. For life. Your if you become a Nazarite, is, you're for life. Your instruction is to not cut your hair. Right. Unless there was something about if you, like, touched a dead body or something, you had to cut your hair after your time of thinking was yes. complete. Yes. yes. Naz, uh, who do we know is a Nazarite for life? Samson. 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 That's the only one I know for life that I can yeah. remember. So he was never supposed to cut his hair, never supposed to take drink, never supposed to touch a dead body, never make, never eat anything made from grapes. Right. Okay. Because that was from birth. Was that his decision? No. 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 That was his parents dedicated him. Many Nazarite vows were not for life. Though. Many were, were not. Again, he's the only one I know of for that life. Was life. But, but verse is, he shall be holy until the days are fulfilled, which he separated himself mm -hmm. to the Lord. Okay. Do you see a reason for Paul to have separated himself to the Lord? I think because he was, he was heading on to that journey. I, I feel like I keep circling back to that. Mm -hmm. But because it... It seems so perilous. It was perilous. It definitely was perilous. You're right. He, and then Jesus, I'm not Jesus, God talked about not being fearful. Right. And speak boldly. Right. And it takes me back to Galatia and Phrygia. Right, right. And how perilous that journey is. Yeah. Because he successfully went through it. Yeah. And it just sounds to me like, 
I don't know. It makes me think of that movie of those, those two Catholics going through Japan. Oh, um, yeah. And um, preaching the gospel there. Now, because Asia's rough. Very. Very rough. Now, he's leaving Corinth. What, what do you know about Corinth? Well, it's the city of Artemis. Right. Yeah, so Ephesus is that. Ephesus is Artemis. Artemis of the Ephesians. Oh, that's right. But Corinth is known for Corinth was a major city. Major city. Major city. Commerce. Gods. gods of every kind. Yes. It's gods a of. And there's travelers. Yes. And there's all kinds of licentiousness. Corinth was an Athens back then, right? The, yes. Yes, it yes. was. Athens yes. was a lot smaller back in this time. Yes. Corinth was bigger. But but think about think about where he was. And he's been there how long? Year and a half. Year and a half. I don't know how long his vow was. Uh, maybe his vow started in the middle. Maybe it started at the end. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. But he needed to separate himself from the Lord. Okay? Um, Do you know what his vow was? No. It didn't say. Yeah. But, again, a little bit of history. He's sent away from Berea so he could save his life. He's alone in Athens. Okay? He's afraid. And the Jews, who he is called to go to first, always rise up against him. Okay? That sounds like a good time to set himself away for a vow to the Lord to me. So really, really here. Maybe because he did that, he had the night vision. Mm -hmm. It's pure speculation. I have no timeline whatsoever. It's just speculation. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a weird question? Yeah. Does this mean he's not taking communion? That would be correct. Isn't that can't, like a weird thing? That's just yeah. a weird thought that, that came into my head. I was like, oh, you must not be doing communion then. No. No. That remembers the death of the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And what he did for us, which would also be abstinent from that and letting your hair grow longer would also help you remember what and the Lord did. And it's also an Old Testament vow. It is so a it is about, that interesting. About. So it might be something for him that's like he's a good soothing, Jew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, soothing yeah. his right. Jewish heart. <laughs> but he's a good <laughs> Jew, and it's a good reason. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, that's a good thing. But he didn't do the wine at Passover either. Do say he that didn't again? do the wine at Passover either, because he'd been no. there for a year and a half. If it's at the beginning, because oh, he, he had to celebrate at least that festival. He was You're right. That's, 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 that's a good point. Um, okay, with the United States history of Oh, okay, but taking leave of them, saying, I will return to you again, if God wills, he set sail from Ephesus. Put uh, chapter 19, verse 8 under that, I will return. Okay? Like, Nick. Wait, George MacArthur? Do what? I will return. MacArthur? <laughs> Douglas MacArthur. Hmm? Yeah. Do what? Uh, under the word, I will return in chapter, or verse 21, put chapter 19, verse 8. Because he said, if God wills, I will return to you. So when he lands at Caesarea, he goes up, greets the church, and he goes down to Antioch. Having spent some time there, he left and passed successively through the Galatian region and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Okay? Um, on your map, where is Phrygia and Galatia? continent. They're in Asia. But like he's forbidden to go there in chapter 16. So what's happened? That's a good question. Right? <laughs> I'm like, now, because you know, maps and me, sometimes you're good, sometimes you're Well, he wasn't ready. I think God just, yeah. yeah. Who, for, who forbade him not to go in? The Holy Spirit. Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like, you're not ready, man. And they're not ready. Yeah. yeah. It's not time for my word to go in there. Not right now. I find it interesting mm -hmm. this way back. He strengthened disciples, but doesn't say anything about him preaching or going to synagogues or anything. Okay, like, question about that. He strengthened the disciples that are in what continent? Asia. Where he was? Forbidden to go. So how are their disciples? Because other people come. Just because he wasn't there doesn't mean right. nobody else has. Okay. Those two weren't allowed to go. But where would those other people have come from? The cities he has been to. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so, but we know more about these disciples. Do we know where the other apostles are? Are they still all in Jerusalem at this point? Again, we have to study Peter. We have to study 
uh, maybe Luke. We'd have to study John, John to figure out where these guys are. John was in Greece at some point before he yeah. was exiled. So he joins us, so right? right? And John has joined the other apostles have been up in this area. Right. See? Aren't you looking at this book going, oh, I need to go to that book in my Bible and write down, Paul was, according to Acts, Okay, um, right there on verse 22, I think that's where I have, um, that ends the second missionary journey. 49 to 51 AD, second missionary journey is done. Now, a Jew named Apollos, an Alexandrian by birth, an eloquent man, came to Ephesus. Okay, this just makes me want to make a list of Apollos. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so who's this guy? Again, at that verse, now right, third missionary journey starts. A.D. 52 to 56 on verse 23. Okay. Can I land? Are you good, Miss Joni? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, you had homework on first Aquila and Priscilla on page 42 because they're leaving with him to go to Ephesus. They're leaving Corinth and they're going with this guy. I mean, they're tent makers, so maybe they're nomadic too. I don't know. But we find out something about house about them, so I'm thinking they're not nomadic. They actually settle into these cities. 1 Corinthians 16, 19. So we know, again, thank you for the clarification. This is really helpful. Um, that letter is written on Paul's third missionary journey, and Aquila and Priscilla have a church where? In their house. In their house. In Asia. In Asia. In, Asia. Actually, in Ephesus. In Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Okay? They send greetings to the believers in Corinth because they left Corinth with him to go to Ephesus. Okay, their house is where the letters for the Corinthians are written from. That's pretty cool. These friends he made while he's making tents now house him. But it never says they're saved. I mean, you assume at this point they're definitely saved, but it never actually tells you. Like all the others that tell you. How do we know they're saved? What do they do? They're, they're running churches and they're someone else. <laughs> and they're correcting and someone else. Apollos. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You had Romans 16. What did you find out in that one about them? That they risked their necks for Paul. Uh, in Rome. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, well, does Aquila cool. know something about risking his neck? Um, I thought it was neat that the first convert was living with them. Isn't that cool? That is cool. Yep. Go down in the Bible as the first convert in Asia. There you go. It's amazing. There you go. Now, Aquila knows something about risking his neck. That's for sure. He has left Rome because well, he's said leave. Right. Right. Okay. Um, the letter to the church at Rome. Okay. Again, I want to go to my Bible and go, Rome. Written in um, Aquila's house in what city? He's ready to Rome from Corinth. From Corinth. Okay? On Paul's missionary journey. How does that fit in there? He, he's dedicating himself to the word, right? Mm -hmm. He's writing. I didn't think about that. I thought if he's dedicating himself to the prayer, and the, then he's going out preaching. He's writing, but he doesn't know that it's going to become our word. He doesn't know that. But his letters to these churches is our scripture. So when he says he's dedicating himself to the word, he's writing the very word of God. That's part of it. Now, of course, he's going out and reasoning because we know what happens. He gets, you know, nothing. A lot of good happens. A lot of stirring up of the city happens. So we know he's also doing that. But he's writing the word. Aquila and Priscilla give him this safe haven to do that. And, you know, prisons help him do that too. Mm -hmm. But Corinthians, Romans, huge, huge books that we base our doctrine on are written. But these people, is it important that we 
who are not foreign missionaries support those who are. And I'm not just talking money, okay? I am not just talking money. They need support emotionally, in prayer, um, just building them up, being happy that they're on a holiday so that they hear something positive that other people may not be giving them. End of the year, oh, I need tax whatever. Hmm, I bet they could use some extra funds. Send it. Wow, that if we didn't stay, they couldn't go. And they will tell you that, and they will tell you that. And if you didn't stay and support us, we couldn't go. So staying is just as important as going, okay? Aquila and Priscilla, man, I never realized how much they ministered to Paul and how I benefited from them because of First and Second Corinthians and Romans. That, that's just huge. Now, Second Timothy, what you, they're not with Paul when he writes Second Timothy. He's very lonely when he writes Second Timothy. Because where is he? He's in prison. He's in prison. Well, he knows it's going to happen. This is it. This is the end. I'm going to die. But he sends greetings from prison in Rome. To whom? These are good friends, right. And they're with, what do we know about Timothy? Oh, my beloved son of the faith. Which, um, I think when we studied Timothy, they talk about a baton. And he is like, pass the baton to Timothy to carry on what I've been starting. What a responsibility. But who's Timothy got with him? Paul's friends, Paul's supporters, Paul's oh, can come in and get refreshed in their home, Aquila and Priscilla. They're so excited so without phones and internet that they know where everyone is. And How do they do that? And what's going on in these different right. churches? How do they know all this stuff? I mean, now it would be easy, but I can't imagine. They have Sarah from Andy Griffith. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you make a list about Apollos. He's Alex Where's Alexandria? Egypt. Egypt. Okay. These people are from all over. Again. He's a Jew. He's a good Jew. Mm -hmm. Who's gone to Ephesus. Um, hey, scripture says he's eloquent. Why would he need to be eloquent? Because Paul says he didn't talk with eloquent words, but Apollos did. He's mighty in scriptures. What scriptures? Old Testament, because he's a Jew from Egypt, which makes me think of Pharaoh and Moses and all that stuff. Okay? Um, came to us a mighty in scripture. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he was speaking and teaching accurately the things concerning Jesus, being acquainted only with the baptism of John. So what were the things of Jesus that he was preaching about? Speaking about. If he only knows the baptism of John. His ministry then? Repentance. Repentance. Is he preaching um, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus? No. Well, that's a problem. He's only got part of the gospel. Okay? Um, and he begins to speak out boldly in the synagogue. So he's telling them to repent, right? Then what? This is Jesus, and then repent. But then they'll say what? What happened to Jesus? He was, he was killed. Okay, so while well, we repent, but I mean, you know, Jesus died on the cross. We need more instruction. Okay? But I love the fact that he was sharing what he knew. He didn't have the whole story, he didn't know everything, but he was still, you know, we say, oh, we, I, don't just, I just don't know enough to, you know. Right, and they ask me stuff that I don't they, know. Yeah, and he, he was sharing what he knew and doing what he could with the knowledge that he had. With the no I love that. So, but he's teaching accurately about Jesus. So he, he knows but, all that stuff's right. But so to me, it said, said that, you know, there were believers, but to me, okay, you're, you preach repentance, mm -hmm. but you saw Jesus died on the cross. You don't know what else happened. What else? Why in the heck am I going to repent? Right. Mm -hmm. 
that was that was my God. I'm like, I'm going to repent from my sins, but I mean, that the law tells me what to do with yeah, that. Yeah, but what comes? Well, but preaching you know, Jesus why? means this is Messiah. Bingo. This is the Savior. Because that that's God part of has John the Baptist's message, right? Exactly. This, this is the yeah. Son of God who takes away the sins of the, the world. sins of the world. All truth, all truth. Does. So that would mean Jesus is Messiah. Right. Imagine how thrilled he was to hear the rest of the story. Right? Oh, right? Oh my gosh. It is right. finished. You're right. You're right. Oh my God. But he was preparing the way. I mean, the whole thing, that, and that's what John did. Is and he, that's what John did. He made, made them aware of their sins, so Correct. that when they got the gospel, they were prepared to take it. So and he was that, that. Um, lays the foundation of Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. To explain, so he was still doing good, just partial good. He Absolutely way, was. But it was still preparing the way for Jesus. Mm -hmm. to, that's just right. Yeah. But it's like going to half of the book. We need the rest of the book. We need the rest of the message to continue on. Okay. Um, he didn't include Jesus' death, burial, most importantly, resurrection, resurrection because right. he conquered death, which takes away the old covenant to usher in the new, including Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, now we go into, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. Do they do this publicly? No. no. This is the way. Oh, I think, that doesn't sound right. I think maybe, I think maybe we need to talk to him privately and let him know the rest of the story. Dude, you're missing the best part. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> let me, you know. So, when he wanted to go uh, to, across to Achaia, the brethren encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him how come now he's ready? He got the whole story. He got the rest of the message. So now he's saved. Right. This is when he got saved. Because he's going to receive Holy Spirit. Okay. They know the disciples in this other city somehow. <laughs> right, right. Are you saying these guys? He wasn't saved. I don't think he was because that? he didn't have Holy Spirit. No. It's a little, little S spirit. He was fervent in the little S spirit. It was right. not the Holy Spirit. John was right. saved. Yep. He didn't have. Because he believed in the coming Messiah, right? Okay, and his job was too. to do that, and he was dead before the cross. But this man did too. He yeah. believed in the but coming Messiah. But he's alive Jesus. after the cross. There's the killer. Does that make I sense? Disagree. No. Yeah. John the Baptist believed in Jesus coming, and his job was to proclaim Christ is coming. He is the Messiah, but he hadn't died on the cross for his sins yet. Then all those people that became Christians with John, with John the Baptist, John the Baptist weren't Christians, weren't born again because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. No. That's what you're no. saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that they believed John's message that Jesus was the Christ coming. Okay, what if they He's died the before Christ came? Then their sins are taken how? How are their sins... Uh, like the Old Testament? Just like, like the, the Old Testament, Testament. yes. Okay? okay? Because our timeline is cross after. Okay, Once right. Jesus died, mm -hmm. now faith that Jesus came and died, not is coming, is here but hasn't paid right. price John yet. John even said, John said, I baptize with water. One is coming who will baptize right. with. Right. So it was, I'm not baptized. I'm not saving sins. Correct. I'm just baptizing with water. Somebody is Correct. coming who will save you of your sins. That's right. why that was so important that Apollos' message had to be full gospel. We are not up to the Jesus. cross like John the Baptist preached. He just didn't know the rest or of the after. story. He didn't. And it doesn't say that's well, when he got saved. So I it think doesn't. that's an assumption. I think, uh, like John the Baptist, he was saved also. He just he was ignorant of the rest. He didn't know, and they wanted the complete story to go out. So they that's why they needed to correct him. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something out here. Yeah. Um, after the cross, no Holy Spirit, no salvation. Simple as that. That has got to be doctrine. Mm -hmm. I feel like we in the next got chapter to be we get into that. Some when too. we will. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Because after the cross. We're not looking at Jesus coming, going to forgive our sins, going to pay. He did it. And because he did it, Holy Spirit now dwells, and we believe that Jesus came, paid for our sins, rose, conquered death. Everything up to that, if you only believe up to cross, that 
people that came before Jesus. He wasn't even preaching the cross, though. But I mean, I, I can't believe that he didn't hear but about it. We don't know that because right? he said teaching accurately the things concerning Jesus. Concerning, concerning Jesus. Jesus. That, that John the Baptist had been preaching. Yeah. Yes. Okay? Yes. Not right. John the Baptist is dead. He doesn't know Jesus died on the cross. Being he got beheaded. Acquainted, acquainted only with. He was okay. only acquainted with that point. He didn't know his story. Does that so he like a child? Right. right. Ignorant. I feel like this is proven in chapter 19. Yeah. When and it is. John yeah. Yeah. And we will get there. Right. right. But I, boy, this this is a doctrinal understanding. I just don't understand that. why they would choose such tricky wording. Why they wouldn't just say. It's not it tricky. Is, it is. It, it explains him the way of God more accurately. More accurately, right. as it included Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Because I think what? about Acts 1 all the way up to chapter 18. We've been talking Holy Spirit. Why does Holy Spirit come? What happens when Holy Spirit comes? Why can Holy Spirit come now and Jesus told you to go wait for him in chapter 2? Why? Yeah, because 19, this is now New Testament. Chapter 19, verse 2, though, spells it out so much more clearly mm -hmm. to those who are acquainted but don't know. Right. 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 So to me, I'm just like, why can't we be different? This is inductive study. I want to know. Because if it's, it's, it's inductive study, you're asking those questions. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what, that's what I think um, studying that way makes you do. Mm -hmm. Why does it say that? Why can't you just say... I mean, it could have. Great question. I mean, Why? Paul might have done that so that he could have shown what Priscilla's and Aquilas was were doing. Right. It all provides us information, doesn't it? it? I wonder if there's a lost in translation too, because it says that Apollos is teaching accurately, and then Priscilla mm -hmm. and Aquila teach him the way of God more accurately. Well, mm -hmm. nothing he said was wrong. It's just more completely. I feel like there might be a lost in translation. But what was he teaching that. accurately? He was John. teaching the first half. The things concerning <laughs> Jesus, because he was only speaking with the baptism. Yes. Yeah, that's Repentance. complete. Yes. Okay, here's now the you one know what he's teaching. Says. Okay, uh, giving us. Uh, let's see. In regard to the fact that his followers in chapter 19 are unaware of the Holy Spirit, giving us insight into the Old Testament believers who, uh, though they were regenerated and probably indwelt by the Holy Holy Spirit, were unaware of a full understanding of the nature of His work in them. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he could have been indwelled. Right. I'm not unaware. Holy Spirit can't be just unaware. There's no. Unless you've been shared with the Holy Spirit, I don't think you can. Again, that's a commentary. Um, yeah, right. a man's it's just one other. It's just thought. somebody else's yeah. opinion. Something else to pray over. And exactly. Well, it's a um, let's go to um, in Corinth. He goes over, right? He says there they welcome him in Corinth, right? When uh, okay, I Greece, right? They encourage him. Wrote the disciples to welcome him. When he arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed through. Grace, for you powerfully refuted the Jews in public, demonstrating by the scriptures that, what's his new message? Jesus, Jesus was the Christ. Christ. New message. Jesus was the Christ. Answer is always in scripture. Okay? Um, that was not his message before. Now he's demonstrating. How's he demonstrating? By preaching. By preaching. That's different. He's demonstrating now because he's refuting the Jews. Do you see that? He was in the synagogue before. Now he's refuting the Jews saying, no, Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He died, was buried, and he rose again. Who explained all that to him? Priscilla. Yes. Okay. And he, and he believes. You have uh, 1 Corinthians 3, which is another um, cross-reference. Jenny, what scripture do they have then? They have the complete Old Testament. To my knowledge, because remember, there's 400 years of yeah, silence between Malachi and Matthew. So they had Old Testament because all those guys were dead. Okay. Uh -huh. Did they have any of the New Testament? None. No. Because all of that was being written. So um, when was the first after book? Christ died? Which was 33. Which was 33 AD. And uh, I think Acts is one of the earliest we uh -huh. have. Is that right? I think that's one of the earliest books we have because and it was written why in wouldn't it be? Two, What's it about? 52. The it's about the acts about, of the apostles and the start of the church. Right. And okay. Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit coming, which initiates the church. Which would okay? make sense that that would be the first book. It would, wouldn't because it? Because they need to know that the Holy Spirit is now indwelling. Right, first. right. Galatians and James are the first, or the oldest. Galatians and James, which would make sense because who wrote Galatians? Paul, and he's writing it as he's 
They were doing the missionary journey. Forty nine eighty. Good. Hmm. Which okay. Might, yeah, Galatians but that's, written. But they nine AD, right? Didn't there. have copying stuff, so they wrote letters and then right, and slowly yeah. they'll start rewriting it and passing it around. Right. So it wasn't exactly Very interesting able. research right. to see how the Bible was canonized. What they decide to keep in, what mm -hmm. they decide not to First and second Thessalonians were fifty and fifty one. So that's before first and second that. Corinthians were fifty four and fifty five. Okay. Um, what do you learn about Apollos in First Corinthians three and sixteen? That you know what page? Say what number? page forty six? Um, and Titus. Right? And Titus. What did you find out about Apollos there? I like the I planted Apollos water. Right? Yeah. But people He's were, his fellow worker then. People were starting to follow. Right. The, I follow Apollos. Paul. I follow Apollos. You yeah, can't do that. No. That's not that wasn't the point. Paul comes through speaking, leaves, and then Apollos stayed in the cycle. Yeah, yeah. That's totally what I look at it as. And then God gives an the gross. <laughs> Good. Titus. So we learn a little bit about Titus. He's left on the island of Crete by Paul, right? right. What's he supposed to do on that island? Well, Titus is supposed to help Apollos. Right. Oh and he's supposed to appoint elders and set things right in the churches on the island, appoint elders, yeah. right? And Titus is supposed to make sure that Apollos and Zenos don't lack anything. Okay? Whatever they need, yeah. you're supposed to help them. Again, how we support missionaries. Okay, possible theme in 19. We have like 30 minutes to go over. <laughs> okay. Obviously, I'm not going to be reading it all. Um, where is Paul? Corinth. Cor uh, he's in Ephesus. No, he's Apollos. Apollos. Apollos is in Corinth. Think about that. Apollos is now in Corinth. He's in Ephesus. There's the Aegean Sea between them. Uh -huh. Wow. But they're both working for the same thing. But Paul knows from Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't yes. that something? I still. It boggles the mind, doesn't it? It just boggles the mind. There's no phone. <laughs> there's no phone. There's no. Well, there's. I guess you can, there's letters, obviously. Yeah. Huge. Um, all I put was he's in Ephesus for two years. Okay. Add to whatever you want because lots of happens in chapter 19. Okay. But I want to know where he is mm -hmm. because the book of Ephesians. It, I don't know, it just opens up now to me. I'm like, this, this is on his journey and what happened to him before the journey, at the journey, where he was, how come he came there, what kind of response he got there. Um, again, back to your map. He passes through the upper country. Verse 1. Where was the upper country? Right, Galatia and, and um, Galatian region and Phrygia. And he comes down to Ephesus, and what does he find there? How many? Some. Some, but then we find out how many. Twelve. Right. Twelve. Okay. So he finds twelve, and what's the problem with them? They believe in John. They believe in John's baptism, but not... They don't know the full story. Right. No Holy Spirit. Is that saying there's only twelve people that believed? It's just only 12 the 12 that he found. I don't know how many are believers in Ephesus. I just because know he's there, there for two years, so he must need to this be making This is where Priscilla and Aquila are, right? Uh, did he leave them there? Isn't that where he left them? Is that well, right? He had them in Rome. Hold on. Uh, okay, so maybe Yes, I think right. that's right. He left them in Ephesus. Yes. 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 Yeah, so Priscilla yeah. and Aquila are there, so you'd think there's more Christians because well, at least they're, yeah, first of all, they're so. there, but... And okay. This is on his what third, third missionary journey, right? So put these in place. These are following what we've just learned about Apollos and what he was teaching. So exactly, aren't these there's his a problem. Twelve converts. I think That's it is. What I thought. Apollos is twelve converts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, they okay. probably heard from Apollos before Aquila and Priscilla got to him to explain the rest right. of it, which is why they don't know anything about Holy Spirit. Okay, again, put that next to in your Bible. So all of this hard work you have been doing, you don't forget. Because I will forget. I just, I just will. And then when I read that, I'm like, oh yeah. And Holy Spirit will, you know, remind me of, remember when you am like, yeah, that's right. Um, he asked them, have you received into what? That's interesting, what? 
then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. So he said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him. That is Jesus. We need to a little tweak this message here, okay? So when they hear the message from Paul, what happens? They're baptized in the name of Jesus. They're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Right. And then what happens? Holy Paul Spirit. lays his hand on him and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Okay? Is that how we get the Holy Spirit? Now. We don't need anyone to lay hands on me. I don't need anybody to lay hands on me. <laughs> Just a moment of belief. I honestly can't tell you I have an explanation of why that happens um, there. But it, that is the final reference of speaking in tongues in Acts mm -hmm. for what happens when you get the Holy Spirit. And maybe okay. it happened because they had been, they, they thought they were good because they had been baptized, you know, but it was in repentance. And so this was that physical demonstration to them of right. the difference. See, that's where I go. That's where I go. Um, again, just opinion. I, that's just opinion. Um, they receive the Holy Spirit, they speak in tongues, and they prophesy. Okay? Um, those 12 are saved that day. Okay? I think maybe that happened because they would have been sent out again then. Great. That's great. Yeah. And they know, listen, there is a difference in what I was yeah. telling you about, and now what I have experienced, that now I have Holy Spirit. There's you know they're going to experience There's a difference. Now, if they were speaking in tongues, is now that their language? Now they have to go find people who speak that language? No. Okay. No. no. But. Um, they're enabled they to speak them. other languages yeah. if they encounter those they're people. They're just enabled. Um, yes. Okay. I would. Well, I assume there's that's where I go because the time is a known language. I'm assuming there's yes. a crowd or something. Like, why else would God? That's I mean, because it says well, that's that's not not exactly small. Small. So, no. yeah, Ephesus is a big city. I'm guessing that this was a huge witness to the city. Oh. Which you, you know, you know that's a really good point, too. So, yeah. uh, that would be um, a witness to the city. I, yeah, I totally agree with that. You had to track tongues in Acts. Mm -hmm. Okay? That was page 49 of your homework. Um, I know I'm zooming through, okay. forgive me. Dad would be really proud of me, so I would have, you know, have to tell him. But this is like speaking in tongues on Star Trek. The computer translates. Right? Right. For That's exactly <laughs> what I think. Holy Spirit! <laughs> Holy Spirit! When you, when you study spiritual gifts, when they talk about tongues, even if you look it up here, it's a known language. Yes. It is not Babel, but they never studied it. They can just speak and it. And it's always for a purpose. And it's right. always for a purpose. crowd and it was a witness to it. Right. Because it's right. always, and that's what it, every time it is, there's a purpose. That's it. People that are around that need to hear in their language. Right. Right. So, yeah. Um, the promise of the Holy Spirit is for all who believe, therefore all the Lord calls, mm -hmm. receive him at salvation. So um, that's chapter 2. What happened in chapter 2? Well, that was Pentecost. Pentecost. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the good. And then in Acts 8, those were, Acts 2 was Jews. Right. Okay? Acts 8 is what group of people? Samaritans. Samaritans. Hmm. So, half Jew, half. Right. Right? And Samaritans. And who took that initial message. Exactly. Okay? And they're baptized in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. Right? But the Holy doesn't, Spirit doesn't fall on them until Peter and John lay hands on them. Okay? Um, the text doesn't say that they spoke in tongues in that uh, context for some Samaritans. Uh, in Acts 10, so you, again, you're tracking tongues in Acts. What did you find in Acts 10? The Holy Spirit speaking to the Gentiles. That was it. Cornelius. Different group of people because Peter goes over to see Cornelius. Cornelius. Okay, come over and help. It. Right, okay. They spoke in tongues and exalted God mm -hmm. before they were baptized with water. Okay, uh, the tongues showed the Jewish believers that had come with Peter to the Gentiles, right? Mm -hmm. That well, they got the same thing that we got at Pentecost back in Jerusalem, because they're doing the same thing that we did. Why would the Jews need to know that? Confirms that it's not just for them. It's not right. just for them now, mm -hmm. right? Huge. And Holy Spirit has demonstrated that there, mm -hmm. right? Okay. He, has, uh, it. he legitimizes it. Mm -hmm. Good. Because they needed to see that. Okay? There's no partiality with God. None. 
You've got the Jews, you've got the Samaritans, you've got the Gentiles. Uh, the most part of the of here. Okay? Now, um, here we go with more excitement. Um, there you go. Okay, they read that one. He entered the synagogue. Again, which city is he in? In, in verse 8, chapter 19. Okay, so he's in the synagogue in Ephesus. He continued speaking out boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some were becoming hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way before the people, he withdrew from them and took away the, how many disciples? The twelve disciples, reasoning daily now in the school of Tyrannus. So, what's he said to the Jews? Basically, your blood's on your own head again. Uh, there you go. For all I knew, he shook out his cloak again and went, well, done my job, I'm going to the Gentiles. Because I did what I was supposed to do. Y'all are annoying. Yeah, y'all did the same thing that you always do, but... Hey, they made it three months, though. They but they made it three months, months right? Okay. Um, this took place, so how long is he in Tyrannus? Three years. Two yeah. years. This took place for two years, right? Where he's in the school. So that all who lived in Asia. 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 Oh. We're not talking city now, we're talking Asia. continent. All who lived in Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jew and Greek. That's, again, no internet, no phone. How did they do that? God was performing extraordinary <laughs> miracles by the hands of Paul. Now what's that going to do? That's going to get people's attention. They're talking about it. There you go. They're going to be talking about it. This is the first time I'm talking about miracles from Paul, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, wait, no. Not the Paul, first time. No, because he's uh, been one before. Uh, casting demons out and healing people. That's true. Right. He's been healing okay. people. The lame man. No, that was Peter John. But he has been healing mm -hmm. people. Do you know where that was? Uh, no. Not right this moment. Mm -hmm. But I will look at that. Um, handkerchiefs and aprons were carried from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them. And... Demons were cast out. That's crazy. That, do you read about that any place else in Scripture? When Jesus was... They touched the hem of his garment, right? Yeah. And the women would be healed, right? Him. The power had left him. Paul is the only person... I don't... I'd have to study the other well, disciples, but as far as I know... I was, and I was, Peter, right? But there's handkerchiefs and aprons and evil spirits come out? Well, when I was reading this, when I was reading, I was thinking that same thing happened with Peter with the handkerchiefs and aprons, but I couldn't find it. I, 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 I went it did. flipping through and looking and looking, and I'm like, okay, so... I remember the shadow was cast, and he was healed. People were healed in his shadow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was, there but was not nothing else physical. about... Yeah. I mean, you know, what are you doing? Oh, they're they're in all people and people from people took clothing? these to him though and wanted him to touch them so they could take them back. I don't know that. Either somebody <laughs> preached on this fairly recently <laughs> or Peter had the same thing happen. Yeah. Are doctrines not made out of this? TV evangelists? Oh, yeah. Send me this, I'll send you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I just like. Okay, some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place, it says attempted. Mm -hmm. They were not successful. To name over those who had the evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Yeah, right. Where's their power? Mm -hmm. No authority. Okay. They have none. Right. Because they don't have Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit inside. Big problem. No Holy Spirit inside. you got no power. None. Um, seven sons of one Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. Now, were they successful? No. What happened to these guys? They got beat up. Stripped of their clothes, <laughs> ran out naked. Right? <laughs> right? But they spread the gospel because of it. <gasps> Look at that. Okay? Do you not love the evil spirit says, I recognize Jesus and I know about Paul, but who are you? <laughs> 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 okay, they even know about Paul. Okay, yeah. so that would have put a little fear of God in me too. That um, okay, 
This is a demon speaking to me, and I'm a Jewish exorcist. Well, and there's seven of them. Right? And there's seven and against one. men against. And then they all leave naked. Naked, naked beaten, right? <laughs> Wait, you could stop it naked. From but, the evil spirits physically attacking people. Right? That's but rare. again, they use this man's body because they possess him. He has no control whatsoever to do. Does it say that this man was delivered? No. That is not fair. I do not like that. I want Paul to come in there and go, not right. Does say he did. Does say he didn't. Does say he didn't. Right? God just didn't include it in the info. Okay? So now what does this tell you about Ephesus? What is this a city of? Well, I mean, this is a city of sorcery. Yes. Okay? This is the start of you going, wow, I wonder what's going on in Ephesus all the time. Well, we figure it out a little bit later, right? Mm -hmm. It says, um, oh, wait, yeah, the evil spirit didn't wait for a response, remember? It said, uh, but who are you? They didn't answer. And the man in whom the evil spirit leaped on him, he didn't care for the answer because he knew the answer and that was it. Because they were probably all looking at the, like, <laughs> mm, he doesn't know about us. <laughs> Okay, um, you for know, 17. I want the to know about me, you know? Like, yeah. Well, I wanted to be afraid of me. Yes, yeah, to be afraid yeah. of me. Yes. To have heard of me, you know? Like. Right, right. Okay, um, became known to all the Jews and Greeks who lived in Ephesus. And what happens? Fear. Fear. Okay, why did fear fall upon them all? Why? It's like a, is this like a righteous fear? I think it I think was. So. They're like, oh, I no, think it we're, was. We're doing a lot of best because what would they know <laughs> that the evil spirit said? I know about Jesus. I know about Paul, but yeah. Very, oh, so this thing that has power, and we saw what he did to the seven here, but he knows about Paul and Jesus. Hmm. So fear falls on them. And then what's the result? Because of that fear. Those who practice magic brought yeah. their books together and began burning them. They're getting rid of their evil everyone. practices. Okay. But because, go back to verse eight, uh, 17. Right. All and the name of the Lord Jesus, not Paul, right. was being magnified. So, yes. Then because his name was being magnified, they're burning their books at great expense to them. Now, uh, I was reading in the commentary this morning, um, Ephesus. Now, Ephesus was known for their giant library. And, I know you probably can't see that. Can you see? This is where he was brought. This is where they're going, Artemis! Oh, the Artemis of Ephesians, you know, yeah. uh, for two hours. Yeah. And if I'm reading it right, two more hours once they get in there. Okay? That 28,000 people could be housed in that place. They're also known for their giant library. Their books were expensive. What were they doing with the books? What specific books? Magic. Magic. Exorcism. All that is going out. Okay, who does this disturb? Right? Go down to uh -huh. verse 24. Demetrius? Uh, I yeah. Don't like her. Demetrius. Oh, yeah, right. Okay? So, this city is repenting. They're burning their magic books and the word of God, not the word of exorcists and magic, was growing mightily and prevailing. This is one of the first times the Gentiles turned against them. Yes. On their own. Like the Jews were getting the Gentiles against them, but this is the first time it's a Gentile. Because they, finally, they didn't care about the religion part. It wasn't affect their pocket, but now they Problem. Yeah. Big now problem. This is money. Okay? What is the word of God prevailing over? Take a bestowing. I'm kind of vigil. What's the word of God prevailing over? Well, their, their idol beliefs, sin, just. So much so that who comes to be afraid that he's not going to be able to make a living anymore. Yeah. Right. Along with all his other craftsmen right. that are making the same living out of Demetrius. Right. right. 
Okay. I thought it was so like like the enemy to to round up confusion. Yes, because he's really good at that. About a riot. Yeah. And they're like, whoa, whoa, you don't even know what you're here for. <laughs> and, and they drag him around, and they really still, they even admit, they don't know why they're there. They just they don't know, know somebody They're just mad. Good. Mob mentality. Now, like, wow. <laughs> Mob mentality. It's just get direct. You're right. You're right. Did you go to Ephesus? No. When I was there, they were still selling stuff. Oh, I'm not surprised at that. I'm, I'm not surprised at that at all. Um, so we know Paul's intentions of where he wants to go, right? Um, and he's, he sends Timothy and Erastus to Asia. Now, uh, I think we already, oh, yes, that was awesome. Finish up Demetrius. Let me finish that thought, and then I'll go there, and then that's all the time we have. Um, so what is Demetrius? He stirs him up, and he says, right, uh, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Now, right. he's afraid she's going to get worthless, right, <laughs> and be dethroned. <laughs> this is the god you worship? Yeah. You've you, you got to fight for her so she's not dethroned and become worthless. Yeah. That's disturbing right there. That if you actually went back and evaluated what you just said, are you sure that's where you want to worship? That's just what so you want to worship. They're just so worried for her. <laughs> they're worried. We have to help her. They're worried for themselves, <laughs> really. Yeah. Yes, because that's how they make their money. Mm -hmm. And it's okay? their life, too. Yeah. Cities in confusion, right? Mm -hmm. They rush with one accord. Um, again, we go back to 1 Corinthians 16. When he's writing to the Corinthians at Ephesus, he says a great, a wide door of effective service. I don't know. I, I, I you know, y'all may have known all that before, but I just sit there and go, a wide door? He stays there two years in Ephesus, but there's many adversaries. You think? I just go right back to Demetrius and the mob and many adversaries. Yeah, that's an understatement. But I would put that reference and I go to Ephesians again and go, this is the wide door that he was talking about to this church because he's writing it in Corinth. I mean, Ephesus to, to Corinth. So here's Corinth, a wide door of effective service. He wants to winter, but he's can't go to Corinth yet because he has a wide door of effective service that has been open to him. I love how he puts things. Okay, uh, Paul said Timothy might go to Corinth. Apollos was coming. Okay, uh, and he wants a Corinthians to collect a gift to send to the Jerusalem church, and then they get to pick who gets to take the gift, and then maybe he'll go with them, maybe he won't. Depends on how Holy Spirit leads. Okay, now. Um, this is about Demetrius, okay? Uh, again, the door of effective service. I said that, afraid that the temple of Artemis would be regarded as worthless, and she would be dethroned. Now, interesting who quiets the crowd. First, they go, and, and again, I showed you where they were um, taking him. Uh, they throw the city into confusion, and in that confusion, who's dragged along? Gaius and Aristarchus. His, his traveling companions, yes. but who isn't dragged is oh, Why is that? Either he wasn't right standing next to them when they grabbed him. Right, right. Don't be afraid. I am with you. No man will be able to attack you to harm you. It was God's God. providence. <laughs> exactly. He just wasn't supposed to be there at that time. He ran right. out to the outhouse. They showed up. He was hey, like, wait, what's Can you imagine his mom <laughs> thinking about that? And then he comes out and he goes, where'd everybody come back? <laughs> That's how my Where's everybody come <laughs> Right? Um, he's kept from going into that theater by his, by his friends. By his friends. Yes. Okay? Um, some Asiarchs. I, I guess that's how you pronounce that. I had to look yes. up what that was. Anybody know what Asiarchs are? They ran the Pan Ionian Games. Okay, so they're sort of kind of officials of some kind. They're his friends. Paul's friends. Okay, now they think it's Alexander, right? That's going to up there and quiet the crowd. But what happens? He puts his hand up, right? Intending to make a defense to the assembly. 
Does he? No. What happens to him? Crowd's yelling at him for two yeah. hours. Yeah. yeah, he has nothing. <clears throat> he, he can't quiet him down. Um, well, they recognized that he was a Jew. Right, mm -hmm. which makes him cry even all the more for two hours. Right. Right? Greatest Artemis of the Ephesians. After quieting the crowd, the who? The town clerk. 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 A nobody. A nobody. Yeah. Sort of a nobody. Yeah. Right? Um, he, wanting to be a somebody. He's uh -huh. the city recorder. Somebody. So he records what's happening in the city. That's his right. job. He quiets the crowd, okay? Because he knows the law, mm -hmm. and the law says you're in danger of being accused of a riot. I don't think you really want to do that. But you got in your head how big that place was? Uh-huh. Why did they listen to him? Well, because he had authority in the city. He did, because the authorities are going to come and go. So what actually was happening? Well, <laughs> written down, this is what happened, and he has to be accurate because if he isn't... Oh, so he's like the title. But, right? Yeah. So they don't want him to write that down, that there's a riot in the house. Uh, no, no, because then we'll be in trouble. So he's right. So he dismisses the assembly. Mm -hmm. him, take it to the courts. That's what you're lawfully, legally supposed to do. Just take it to the courts. Let it be settled in a lawful assembly. But he states undeniable facts. What are the undeniable facts about Artemis? A guardian of the temple? Right. Yeah. Okay. How'd she get there? Fell down. She fell down from heaven. Okay. And Ephesus is the guardian of her temple. Right. Those are undeniable facts. Sort of. Okay. God didn't allow Paul to stand up and preach. Look at the crowd. So many people. Yes, but they were ready. Wow. Yeah. But they, right? God decides who's going to hear, when they're going to hear, and when their heart, because he knows their heart. He's open to hear the gospel. Paul uses non-Christians to protect us. Yes. God has people mm -hmm. in leadership that are his people, even if they're not his people, as in Christians, but they're people that he's put there. Totally use them. Yes. And with everything going on in D.C. and everything, you yes. wonder who God's up there using and what's going on. But, mm -hmm. you know, the stuff that we're not going to hear about is behind the scenes. But God's got people up there that we don't need to worry because he's got, even though it's not his people, it could be completely evil people that right. worship Artemis or whatever, but he's got people that he's planted there for his purpose, yeah. whatever that is. Which helps me understand how he used Pharaoh. Right. Because first it says he hardened Pharaoh's heart, then Pharaoh hardened his heart, and then Pharaoh hardened his heart, and then God hardened Pharaoh's heart, and then the might. Mm -hmm. He uses and never. Okay? Our application has got to be God decides where and when his gospel is preached. And again, missionaries will tell you that. They said the same thing, same thing, same thing, and all of a sudden, they hear it. Why do they hear it now? God trained them. Okay? He uses man, but man doesn't decide the outcome of sharing the gospel. Okay? Nor does he decide. Who's going to hear? He doesn't control what crowd comes and what crowd doesn't. The Lord draws men into himself. What's our only responsibility? Deliver. 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 Open your mouth. Speak boldly. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Right? And then God gives the increase, or he doesn't. That's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to share, even when we think they might not like what we say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not because I'll get stoned to death but because they might not like me anymore. That's hard. I think they're both hard. But eternity is at stake. That's more important. Any other little nuggets people saw that they went, wow. Well, I just was thinking with the demon who said, I know Paul and I know Jesus, but I don't know who you are. I just think about the spiritual world during this time that is not necessarily recorded except in little snippets like that. And these demons need to be losing their minds. Like, oh, there's another Christian. Oh man, I had it. Right? Christian now. Right? Right? Yeah. I, I, I agree. 
because they know the end. Yeah. Because Satan knows the end because right. God, whatever. Okay. I looked at Paul's past miracles. Acts 13, he struck Elamis blind in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. uh, Acts 14, he uh, healed a paralytic right. in Lystria. Right. And then Acts 16, in Philippi, he, he rebuked the evil spirit, the one yes. from that lady that was talking. Yes. So he's done one of each, but it's right. like, there's only one of each listed up until this point. At this point, it's just miracles everywhere. But not so. handkerchiefs and aprons. And well, it's just interesting. So those are the only three that recorded before, and they're kind of far between in just one, like one person, right? And not these like, people are being healed from any sickness. Demons, demons are being cast out. Wow. And it, again, doesn't happen ever again. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Okay, give me just a couple minutes and we will start. Uh, read this. Read this. Read this.